So this video builds off the previous one that we made on the uh, Gervais Principle, the most terrifying book in the world by Venkatesh Rao. So if you haven't watched it, take a look at the video, previous video, so that you understand what we're talking about here. The idea here is that conspiracy theories are delusions deliberately created by sociopathic leaders in society and propagated as rumors, unsubstantiated by any evidence, and with plausible deniability built in, to mislead the general public Remember, we have three classes of population, the sociopaths at the top, the uh, clueless in the middle who, who believe in them, and the so-called losers who don't play the game, opt out of all of the conspiracy delusions and pursue their own objectives independently. And maybe they use the organizations created by the sociopaths, but they don't ever become like sold out members. Those are the clueless, huh? the sheep, sheeple. <laughs> so what is the psychological uh, methodology or the, the phenomena behind this uh, phenomenon of conspiracy theories. Even though there is absolutely no proof and everything is taken on faith, still so many people fall for it. It's been a real head scratcher for me. <laughs> to watch even intelligent people, even some spiritually advanced people, fall for these conspiracy theories. I have a couple of friends who are anti-vaxxers, I mean rabid anti-vaxxers, who even like cut off contact with their families over the issue. And, uh, you know, I got the vaccine what, a month ago or so? And absolutely no ill effects. So, I mean, I really don't know what they're talking about. And then there was one, one of our viewers who was quite intelligent, even realized he was a disciple of a disciple of Nisargadatta Maharaj. And he got into the whole climate change is a hoax thing. I mean, you know, that is a clear abnegation of critical intelligence. Because all you have to do is look up the data. And, you know, you, you can't have a conspiracy that involves like thousands of people all over the world. You know, the truth is going to leak out. So it's just, I mean, a matter of faith, almost religious faith to these people. In fact, many religious teachings that are part of major faiths are of the same nature. They're baseless. They're impossible. Like the whole uh, Christian idea that at uh, the second coming of Christ, the people's bodies that are buried in the ground, decomposed, are going to somehow be made whole again and rise up alive and live forever with Jesus in heaven. 
I mean, wow, this is like beyond science fiction, you know? <laughs> this is amazing. It uh, transgresses every rule of reason and, and uh, clear thinking. Physical objects follow physical laws. Spiritual things follow spiritual laws. And in between, subtle things like the mind follow the laws of the subtle world. That's just the way it is. And there's no way that even God is going to break his own rules or her own rules <laughs> to make your favorite fantasy happen. So what is the psychological mechanism here? Basically, the people who want to believe these things want to be told comforting untruths. Comforting untruths that soothe the stress of having to confront a world that appears chaotic, meaningless, random, unpredictable, and uncaring. Now, the reason that the world appears like this to these people is that they don't know the higher laws. For example, they don't know for that Shakti the creatrix of the material universe is basically just playing. She does it as a sport. It's described in the scriptures. So sometimes she's capricious. Sometimes she just destroys things for no reason at all. Huh? Just to entertain herself or Shiva. Sometimes she acts without any clear reason. Just for the heck of it. <laughs> just for fun. Huh? She can do that because she is Saguna Brahman. Just like Shiva is Nirguna Brahman. Brahman without qualities. She is Saguna Brahman. Brahman with qualities. But these qualities are basically arbitrary. She makes things up as she goes along. Huh? There is a master plan, but it's very big on the scale of the whole creation. Over thousands and thousands of yuga cycles. Billions and billions of years. But that plan has a great deal of slack in it, and she takes advantage to basically favor those that she likes and destroy those that she doesn't like, who threaten her hegemony, hegemony, excuse me, <laughs> over the universe. The demons, in other words. So... Because the demons in Kali Yuga become the prominent leaders of society, the sociopaths, in other words, Asura. Asura means the impious, the unsaintly people. Just like Sura means saintly people, devotees, sages, like that. So the Asuras are constantly confounded by a universe that does not follow their plans or meet their expectations. But still, because their goal is only material power, they have no problem making up all kinds of lies that they think are going to benefit them. And then they propagate these lies through media and gossip word of mouth, and the authority of trusted people that they have usurped and are actually their uh, right-hand men, 
like the news media and political parties and religions and any kind of group, any kind of organization that can be usurped will be usurped by the asuras, by the sociopaths, the demons, and used to spread this nonsense. Huh? But the, the people, the clueless people, who don't really understand how this is all working, focused on the material energy with no higher knowledge, which is basically 99% of human society today, have a deep need for these comforting untruths. They want to feel that there is an order in the world, that somebody is in control, huh? even if the people in control are harming them. They would rather have that kind of leadership than none at all. So the clueless people accept the lies of the sociopaths. They accept the uh, untruths and conspiracies of the demons because that to them is preferable to being in a world that's completely out of control. See, in this world, really nobody on the human level is in control. Everybody is just scrambling for the tiniest edge of advantage they can to lord it over others and accumulate wealth and power so they can get more sense gratification. That's what's going on here. But the people beneath them who maybe have some scruples, some morality, some sense of what right and wrong, want to be told that actually there is an order in the human world, the human part of creation, and that there are people in control, there are people who are making things happen, huh? even if it's a total lie. They would rather believe that. They would rather believe the, the vaccine conspiracies, the, what is it, QAnon, conspiracies, and on and on, so on and so forth. The Christian conspiracies, the Buddhist conspiracies, whatever, right? Even we have talked a little bit about Mahabharata, that it may be simply a novel, an epic, a wonderful epic with all kinds of good qualities, but it's very doubtful that it's actual historic truth. Yet, people want to accept it that way because it gives them a sense that this is all planned out and everything's under control. And you see, it's comforting, even though it's a lie. So this psychological phenomenon explains why otherwise intelligent people, even spiritually advanced people, sometimes accept these things because they don't have the information or the intelligence or the insight to understand the world as it is. So they have to latch on to something to explain the reality that they're experiencing, especially on the human level, even though it's really far-fetched and unproven, unprovable. Huh? How about the Big Bang? This is an unprovable theory about something that happened billions of years ago that nobody will ever be able to verify experimentally or by observation. And yet, the people who propagate this lie style themselves as empiricists, empirical scientists, experimentalists. Huh? Yet they're talking about stuff that's happening in other galaxies as if it's the daily news, subject to verification and clearly understood. And it's not, not at all. If you read the scientific journals, there are hundreds of 
conflicting and competing theories. And the one that's accepted and then given to the public as the truth is determined by administrative and political means, not really scientific means, because they're all just stories about stuff that can never be verified. Duh. Then the next episode in this series, we're going to talk about religion. So stay tuned. And we're going to talk about how you separate the truth from the conspiracy theories about spirituality. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.